from Malaysia. This is Updates at Noon. I'm Mohanapriya. Making the headlines today. Malaysia keen to work with neighbours for tourism revival. Najib drops newly appointed solicitors in final SRC appeal. Yang di Pertuan Agong Al Sultan Abdullah Riaya Tudin Al Mustafa Billah Shah during his visit to Turkish Aerospace Industry TAI in Ankara expressed hope that Malaysia too someday will be able to acquire the technology owned by Turkey's leading aerospace industry player. His Majesty also expressed his pleasure over the visit and admiration for TAI's technology. Al Sultan Abdullah also hoped for closer cooperation between both countries, particularly in aircraft manufacturing and research and development in the future. Ini lawatan pertama kali saya ke Turkish Aerospace Industry dan saya perhatikan banyak uh, uh, apa ni uh, aircraft aircraft dia dan juga uh, R&D dia begitu kagum, kagum lah dan saya dimaklumkan. Uh, uh, ada juga anak-anak muda kita ya, uh, untuk untuk mempelajari sikit sebanyak hal-hal uh, uh, teknologi di sini lah dan uh, mereka telah pergi, uh, melangkah begitu jauh dari segi uh, teknologi dan mereka berharap sangat untuk bekerjasama dengan pihak uh, Malaysia lah, dalam hal-hal hal ini. Earlier, Al Sultan Abdullah witnessed an air show that featured locally manufactured aircraft developed by TAI, including unmanned aerial vehicles and training aircraft. Al Sultan Abdullah then tried his hands at handling a TAI aircraft simulator. His Majesty also met and mingled with a group of Malaysian students studying in Turkey, including seven who are undergoing practical training in TAI. The seven from University of Kuala Lumpur, UniKL, are pursuing aerospace industries at UniKL's Bunting branch in Slango and are the first group from the university to undergo practical training at TAI. Uh, di sini saya dapat mempelajari uh, semua tentang uh, semua tentang pesawat uh, berkenaan dengan daripada segi pertahanan iaitu terutama sekali daripada uh, bahagian uh, Hurjet iaitu uh, combat aircraft dalam uh, Turkish Aerospace Industry. Uh, kita mempelajari de de daripada segi development dan permulaan iaitu daripada, daripada design, daripada zero sampai ke uh, final assembly line. Saya juga dapat contribute dalam salah satu per, salah satu kapal terbang nama Hurkush di TI ini dan alhamdulillah saya dapat banyak information dan saya akan cuba sedaya payah saya untuk mengembangkan information ini di Malaysia juga. Malaysia is keen to advance cooperation with its neighbours under ASEAN Trails, where a traveller can experience different ASEAN countries in one trip. Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture, Dato Sri Nancy Shukri, said this is crucial in attracting long-haul tourists in a bid to reinvigorate the tourism industry in the post-COVID-19 period. Speaking to Bernama in Bangkok, the minister said Malaysia wants to share economic benefit through tourism in the region, especially since there are more products and services post-COVID-19. Datuk Sri Nancy is in Bangkok to attend the 11th APEC Tourism Ministerial Meeting and related meetings. Earlier, she met her counterpart, Pipat Ratchaki Prakan, and discussed various matters and issues relating to tourism. She also met representatives from the Thai Travel Agents Association, TTAA. Meanwhile, Datuk Sri Nancy said Malaysia may revise the target of tourist arrivals in September as tourism industry continues to pick up. In July, Malaysia announced a new target for its international tourist arrivals as it has surpassed its initial target of 2 million international tourist arrivals with 8.6 billion ringgit in tourism receipts. Hence, Malaysia revised its target of welcoming 4.5 million international tourists with 11.1 billion ringgit in tourism revenue this year. 
Communications and Multimedia Minister Tansri Anwar Musa said the sharing of best practices in developing digital infrastructure among ASEAN countries can be improved. For this purpose, he said bilateral cooperation should always be held, especially on how each country adapts to technology based on their respective experiences. Tansri Anwar said this after holding a discussion on broadband services and the provision of infrastructure for the expansion of internet service networks in rural and remote areas in Malaysia and Indonesia. The talks involved the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission, MCMC, and the Telecommunications and Information Accessibility Agency of Indonesia during Tansri Anwar's three-day working visit in Jakarta. Kita tahu pertama sekali negara Indonesia sebuah negara yang besar mempunyai pengalaman yang tersendiri bagaimana rangkaian telah dibina, sistem yang dipakai misalnya dan juga penggunaan teknologi satelit yang lebih meluas di, di Indonesia kerana kita juga sedang melihat kepada perkembangan penggunaan geosatelit dan liosatelit dan kita lihat bagaimana perkara itu Uh, daripada sudut sudut pandang pembuat-pembuat dasar dan regulator di, di Indonesia sendiri. The collaboration between Telekom Malaysia Berhad and Yayasan Ekonomi Padang Besar YEPB is poised to create more than 5,000 employment opportunities in telecommunication via Jendela YEPB Career Program. The strategic collaboration is aimed at training more skilled manpower for fiberization works under the National Digital Network Plan Jendela. Kita, Yaisan Ekonomi Padamsa, melalui Kementerian Komunikasi dan Multimedia, kita menjadi penyelaras. Penyelaras kepada projek fiber optik ini. Di antaranya, kita melatih di samping kita vendor dengan apa telekom memberi projek kepada syarikat-syarikat Bumi Putera, di mana kita terlibat permohonannya 400 syarikat. Hari ini, kita dah, dah memberi 73 syarikat vendor. Daripada 400, kemudian kita akan bagi lagi sampai kepada syarikat-syarikat yang layak dan 400 ini kita akan pilih dan kita akan bantu syarikat ini. In this regard, Dato Zahidi also hoped Digital National Berhad DNB would carry out programs similar to TM by providing vendor programs to Bumiputra companies in the implementation of 5G network in the country. Dato Zahidi was met after witnessing the signing of the MOU between TM and YEPB. The Ministry of Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs, KPD and HEP, is targeting a 2.5% increase in sales for this year's Buy Malaysian Goods campaign, KBBM. The Ministry is also optimistic that sales of locally made goods will exceed the 3.2 billion ringgit achieved last year. Deputy Minister Dato Rosal Wahid said this follows more vigorous economic activity after two years of the COVID-19 pandemic. This includes the Keluarga Malaysia sales program, which offers items at prices up to 20% lower than usual. In the meantime, he said that starting this weekend, the Keluarga Malaysia cheap sales program will be held in 222 parliamentary constituencies and 600 state constituencies across the country. Still ahead, contraband liquor worth over 3 million ringgit seized. Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak has discharged his solicitors, Messrs Zaid Ibrahim Suflan, TH Liu and Partners, from representing him in the SRC final appeal hearing. The matter was conveyed by Datuk Sri Najib's lead counsel, Hisham Tepotek, when the hearing started before a five-member bench of federal court led by Chief Justice Tun Tengku Maimun Tuan Mat. Tun Tengku Maimun, acknowledging the latest development, then ordered ad hoc prosecutor Dato V. Sidambaram to continue with his submissions. This is the second time Dato Sri Najib has abruptly discharged his legal team since the start of the SRC international trial. He previously dropped his counsel, Tansri Muhammad Shafi Abdullah, and the rest of his defence team from representing him in the case on 25th July. He had then appointed former law minister Dato Muhammad Zaid Ibrahim's firm as his solicitor. None of the lawyers from the firm were present in court today. 
The Royal Malaysian Customs Department Central Zone seized 28,231 litres of contraband liquor worth 3.4 million ringgit in two separate raids around the Klang Valley. Customs Director General Dato Zazuli Johan said the first raid was conducted on a warehouse in Batu Arang, Selangor, which was suspected of processing unlicensed liquor and arrested four foreigners aged 24 to 37. They seized 5,876 litres of liquor of various brands worth an estimated 414,891 ringgit and 462,105 ringgit in unpaid duties. Di KDM Zon Tengah juga turut menyita peralatan-peralatan untuk membuat proses 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 untuk menghilang tu termasuk tong-tong bahan mentah botol berkosong penutup botol paket dan kotak minuman keras dan stem cukai yang disyaki palsu ya especially cukai cukai stem cukai bibit palsu yang dianggarkan bernilai 50000 Datuk Zazuli said they then raided a warehouse in Punca Alam in Selangor that was used to store liquor of various brands on the same day. There, they confiscated 22,355 litres of contraband alcohol worth 1.01 million ringgit and duties estimated at 1.43 million ringgit. He said investigations found that both premises had been involved in unlicensed liquor processing activities for over six months. Topuan Zurina Kasim, the wife of former Yang Di Pertuan Negeri of Malacca, Tun Dr. Muhammad Khalil Yaakob, was laid to rest at the Malacca Heroes Mausoleum near the Al Azim Mosque at 10 p.m. last night. Earlier, her remains were placed at the Dewan Sri Negeri Hall in Aikro for an hour to allow for last respects to be paid. The funeral prayer at the Al Azim Mosque at about 9 p.m. was joined by over 1,000 congregants led by the Mufti of Malacca, Datu Abdul Halim Tawil. Her remains were then buried near the tombs of the state's fifth Yang Di Pertuan Negeri, Tun Syed Ahmad Syed Mahmud Shahabuddin, and eighth Chief Minister, Datu Sri Abu Zahar Ithnin. Among notable figures present at the funeral ceremony were the current Yang Di Pertuan Negeri, Tun Muhammad Ali Muhammad Rustam, and his wife, Toh Puan Asmah Abdul Rahman, Chief Minister, Datu Sri Sulaiman Mad Ali, and Deputy Agriculture and Food Industries Minister, Datu Sri Ahmad. Hamza. Tho Puan Zurina, 78, died at her residence in Bukit Damansara, Kuala Lumpur, yesterday. The late Tho Puan Zurina was always concerned about the welfare of the people during her lifetime. Tho Puan Zurina Foundation was established in Pantai Peringit in 2015 to provide free hemodialysis treatment to the less fortunate. up in sports, KL City and Negeri Sembilan's winning streak in the Super League. All good things must come to an end and that is the case with Negeri Sembilan FC. Having gone eight away matches without defeat in the Super League, they finally came undone when they were edged 1-0 by Kuala Lumpur City FC at the Kuala Lumpur Football Stadium in Chiras last night. After an evenly fought first half, the home team went ahead in the first minute of injury time when skipper Paolo Josue headed home a corner taken by midfielder Zafri Yahya. Negri Sembilan tried their best to stage a fight back after the break, but it was to no avail, with their best chance coming in the 68th minute when a free kick taken by substitute Matheus Alves Leandro sailed just wide off the goal mouth. This win comes as a big relief for KL City, who are coached by Boyan Hodak after they were thrashed 5-0 by defending champions Johor Darul Tazim JDT on 1st August. Despite the defeat, Negeri Sembilan still remain third in the standings with 32 points, while KL City are now sixth with 21 points. Meanwhile, stragglers of Penang FC fell to their sixth straight defeat this season when they went down 3-2 to Sri Pahang FC at the city stadium in Georgetown. 
Three Pahang shot ahead in the 44th minute through import player Andres Steven Rodriguez Osa before Rafael Vitor Santos equalized for Penang from the penalty spot in the 65th minute. Sri Pahang, however, regained the lead when Osa netted his and the team's second in the 74th minute before David William Rowley made it 3 1 six minutes later. Brazilian striker Lucas Espindola da Silva reduced the deficit in the 85th minute to try and spark a Penang fight back but it was to no avail. The result remained 3-2 until the final whistle. Having played 16 matches, Sri Pahang are fifth in the standings with 21 points, while Penang prop up the table with seven points. And with that, we end today's updates at noon. In our top story today, Malaysia keen to work with neighbours for tourism revival. Tune in to News at 10 coming up at 10pm on My Free Views, Saluran Berita, RTM Channel 123. Now we leave you with a footage of an inflatable building in the British city of Bristol that explores how people would potentially live on Mars. Thank you for watching. I'm Mohan Priya. Salam Kuruka Malaysia.